Hey, it's time for us to install Aptana, a Ruby on Rails integrated development environment. So go ahead, head over to Google, and we need to go over this list of things before we're, everything's installed. We have to install Ruby 1.9.2, which will allow us to, you know, execute Ruby code, like, you know, like use the programming language. Then we need something called DevKit. Just ignore it for now. It, it, it allows you to compile native assemblies on Windows. <clears throat> so you need DevKit. It's not a big deal. We just put it on there. Uh, then number three, we can install Aptana, which is our IDE. It looks very nice and pretty, and it has a play button, which we can use to run our Rails application. Then we should install MySQL 5.0.45 32-bit. It has to be 32-bit. The benefit of that is you can take your MySQL uh, database from your Linux server and bring it right over to your Windows development environment and then boom you got all your stuff there you don't risk you know deleting it all. Okay the fifth thing we have to install Git. Once all of that is installed I mean, what's, once all of that is installed, we can actually install Aptana and run it. We can actually run it and uh, work with our code. So let's begin. First, we have to install Ruby 1.9.2 in Windows. Ruby. So go to Google and type in Ruby installer Windows. And our first hit on Google is rubyinstaller.org, which is the right place to go. There's a big red button that says download. Go ahead and click that download button. Then on the left side, there's some columns. There's Ruby installers. That's what we need. And down lower, other useful downloads. The third one down is Development Kit. We need that one too. It's not a big deal. It's just one of those things. So I'll click Ruby 1.9.2-P290 is what I'm seeing. Uh, save that to your hard disk. And once that is downloaded, double click it, and we will install it. Click Run and accept the license and check all the three checkboxes. They're all good. Uh, I won't go over it, but they're good. And use the default install directory, which is one uh, Ruby192. And it'll put that right on your C drive. Now, once that's installed, go to DevKit and download DevKit which is on that same Ruby installer page, only it's at the bottom and it's got a 7-zip icon. Uh, double click that EXE when it downloads, click Run, and you want to actually uh, change its path to Ruby192 slash DevKit and choose Extract and it'll put it right in your Ruby folder. And once that is in place, it just extracted the files. You're going to want to go in there, and it looks like it's done. Go into DevKit, and double click on DevKit Vers.bat, and that'll do whatever it does. I don't know if that's necessary. Okay, and then double click msys.bat, which is also in that directory. Then you'll be you'll see a prompt. Type cd space slash, and it's the one by the shift key and then hit ls and you should see a listing of the directory contents that you launched msys.bat from and one of those files is dk.rb and you want to use ruby to run that so type ruby space dkrb and you'll be shown some instructions and go ahead just follow those instructions ruby dk.rb space in it give it some time then ruby dk.rb space install and after that's finished you have just installed devkit and ruby uh, exit and then you can type exit and get out of there now to check that ruby's installed go to command type irb right at the command line and you should see this one plus one and that should tell you it's two it equals two good so we installed ruby and in fact installed devkit on our windows system next step is install aptana so first go to google and google for aptana okay uh, click aptana.com and click a big blue button kinda to the right that says download uh, aptana studio 3.04 uh, so you want the standard version and then just click 
download Aptana Studio. You don't need to fill out anything. So let's just let that download. And while it's downloading, move on to installing MySQL 5.045. Go to Google, search for MySQL, click Downloads. Google shows you a little link to Downloads. And you don't want to click the big showy thing. You actually have to go into the Archives, which is in the upper left corner next to Current. And then click on MySQL Database Server 5.0 and you have to use these old versions because it's open source. You gotta be careful. It's buggy. Um, then choose 5.045 from the list of versions you can get. Then go down to Windows and you want to find the download that says Microsoft Windows 32 Windows Installer Format. Go ahead and click that and download it to your hard drive. Then we can begin installing. Um, I have it right here on my hard drive because I downloaded it before. And I'm just going to click next to the first menu, do complete, and then click next, just for the sake of uh, good measure. And then wait for it to install. Basically what MySQL does is it's your database server and it allows you to store, fi uh, not files, it stores uh, text and data in a really quick way and you can have concurrent connections it's a really powerful tool um, Ruby on Rails is database backed the database that you're using is important you should get a good database on there of course this is just your Windows test machine and it's not your Linux production server so like installing MySQL was a little bit more than was necessary uh, make sure that checkbox when you're finished installing MySQL which is the easiest thing to install make sure that configure my SQL checkbox is checked and it may fail on Windows 7 so go to the start menu type MySQL and you want to use MySQL server instance config wizard click yes when you're prompted by the UAC and then you want to reconfigure detailed configuration developer machine multifunctional database uh, choose you know put it on your C drive uh, decision support is fine. We're defaulting pretty much everything here except we want to include MySQL in the bin directory in Windows Path. The include bin directory of MySQL in Windows Path. That's good. And Aptana won't work if you don't do that. Now, uh, set a, a, a password. Set a password and uh, should be good to go. And click Finish. Now you've configured MySQL. The next step is we have to install Git. Git is for version control and Aptana actually won't like it if you don't have Git installed. So Google for just G-I-T, Git Installer Windows. Sorry, Git Installer Windows. And the top hit would be msysgit and that's what you want and then click from that page the downloads link and go ahead and choose get 1.7.6 preview it's a beta but it's get so it's you know it should work fine uh, <laughs> once that's downloaded run it double click it feel free to pause if you're still waiting for it to download and click next to the first thing click next you saw the agreement um, you could check those. That's the only thing that you might want to change. Uh, it can be handy. And I use the middle radio icon on that one page and then uh, the first icon on the next set of radio icons. And that'll install for you. And get, as I said, version control lets you track your source code as it develops and grows. And you can always go back and see what happened and how you ended up with the mess that you ended up with. Uh, that's usually what it's used for. Now, let's check the notes. What do we have? We installed everything. And did I install Aptana? Uh, no, I pretended that I was waiting for it to download. Once Aptana fish finishes downloading, double click Aptana and click, yeah, you want to install it, obviously. Oh, phew, it faded in. That's what took so long. Okay. <clears throat> click next to the first thing and I agree to the next thing and then next. Everything is default. You can default everything. That's all there is to Aptana. 
the problem is those prerequisites, those get things. So once that is installed, uh, you can double click on it and it's going to be wild. Okay, before we run Aptana, let's open up our command window from Windows and type uh, gem-v and just see if gem is installed. Sure enough, gem is installed, that means Ruby is installed, and we're good to go. Now we want to do uh, gem install rails-v equals 3.0.7. That's a good one, trust me. Just go with 3.0.7. You can add more Rails versions if you want later down the road, but Rails 3.0.7, that's a pretty good one. Um, I mean, it's not 3.09, but hey, uh, it's pretty wild. <clears throat> there, you just installed Rails on your computer. Good, we can go off that check mark. 